Hey there, fellow book enthusiasts. Welcome back to Quick Book Summary, the channel where we break down your favorite reads in a flash. I'm Martin, your book buddy in this literary adventure. Now, before we dive into today's treasure trove of knowledge, I've got a quick apology to dish out. Sorry for the slight delay in bringing you this book summary. Life can be a bit of a whirlwind, right? But fear not. Today, we're delving into the pages of Never Eat Alone by the brilliant Keith Ferrazzi. It's a game changer in the world of networking and relationship building, and trust me, you don't want to miss out on the wisdom packed within these pages. So, grab your favorite beverage, settle in, and let's get ready to uncover the secrets to success in both career and life. But hey, before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up if you're ready to absorb some invaluable insights. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the essence of Never Eat Alone and unlock the keys to building lasting connections. Ready? Let's roll. Introduction. Do you think you could have gotten this far in life if you relied on yourself and no one but yourself? Would you prefer to be a lone wolf so that you won't get dragged down by the weight of other people? We are faced every day with these two options. Do you want to do this alone or with other people? Do you want to eat out with friends or do you want to eat out with friends? Or do you want to do it solo? Can you manage this project on your own or would you rather have a co-worker by your side? You see, even though it's great if you can stand on your own, you won't go far if you don't get help from other people. As the cliché saying goes, no man is an island. Even if you overcame every struggle in your life on your life, on your lie own, there must have been a person or two who helped you along the way. Maybe you landed a job solely because you applied to every job vacancy you could find. Although it was through your perseverance alone, you wouldn't have gotten that job if your neighbor didn't babysit your kids as you went job searching. Or maybe your current boss allowed you to leave early so that you could go job hunting since he knew that you'd be affected by the company's downsizing. It's important to realize that building and nurturing relationships will help you in every way you can imagine. You should stop seeing networking as something that only benefits one person. Making connections is a two-way street. If you approach it with the right mindset, every person that you connect with will gain something from it as well. In this book, you'll learn just how important making connections with other people is. You'll learn the importance of graciously accepting help and offering help to other people as well. Finally, you'll learn through Keith's stories, just how the rich keep getting rich and how you can be like them, becoming a member of the club. Even if you're the smartest or the most talented person in your town, you can't go very far without a web of connections. This also applies to hard work and money. This is what the author Keith Ferrazzi realized as he looked back on his childhood and how he got teased by the other kids because he looked poor. Although they weren't rich, Keith's hard, working parents made sure that they could send him to a private school, while his classmates got picked up by shiny, expensive, and new cars. Keith got picked up by a beat-up car. His classmate would tease him endlessly about his polyester clothes and fake shoes. It was embarrassing for him, but it fueled Keith's determination to become successful when he grew up. This wouldn't be the last time the author would feel out of place. As Keith looked around Harvard Business School, he felt like he was back in grade school again, surrounded by people who grew up without barely lifting a finger. The other students came from wealthy families while Keith came from a middle-class one. Once again, he stood out like a sore thumb. He didn't let this intimidate him, though, because he was still set on succeeding by working hard. Keith was comforted by the fact that he had an edge above his classmates since he knew something that they did not. It was through Keith's observations of rich people did he realize the importance of relationships. When he was a kid, he used to caddy at the local country club where there was no shortage of wealthy people. 
As Keith carried their bags, he would hear them talking amongst themselves. How James could help Richard find a job, how Rose invested in Polly's son's startup company, and how their kids got into the best schools because they knew the principal. Keith understood that if you have successful connections, you'll ultimately be successful as well. It's through this network that rich people just get richer. When you know how to play the game of connecting with other people, you'll eventually succeed and become a member of the club. With this realization, Keith kept working hard so that he'll know how to play the game later on. More help came in the form of Mrs. Poland and her endless advices to young Keith. The Poland family was a rich one, and Mrs. Poland had Keith as her caddy. Mrs. Poland would put in a good word for Keith whenever she could, and soon enough, other people at the club asked Keith to caddy for them. It was during his time as a caddy that Keith learned that success could be accessed through blood, money, or talent. You can reach success through hard work. However, it won't take you very far. Mrs. Poland taught Keith about the power of generosity that when you help others, they tend to help you too. Reciprocity is another term for this. But Keith only saw it as care. If you cared for each other, you would do things for each other. Keith knew the importance of building and nurturing relationships, while his classmates at Harvard Business School did not. If you reached out to people and made a difference in their lives, you'd be enriching your own life as well. When you connect with people by sharing your knowledge, time, and energy with them, you would most likely get those in return. Having connections is not about transacting with people you can gain something from. It's about enriching and managing your relationships with them. Don't keep score. Just like what was mentioned in the previous chapter, you can't go too far without connections. Keith knows this by heart. When students ask him what's the secret to success, he says generosity. It might be an unusual response, but Keith has gotten to where he is now because of generosity. The author went on to recall that he wouldn't have gotten a scholarship to one of the best private schools in the country if it had not been for someone's help. Alex McKenna was the CEO of the company where Keith's dad worked as a steelworker. He was determined to give Keith a bright future, so he expressed his desire to Alex. Impressed by the father's nerves to ask, Alex granted Keith a scholarship to a private school where he was a trustee. Later on, Keith was accepted in Yale. Elsie Hillman, chairwoman of the Pennsylvania Republican Party, approached Keith. Elsie read about Keith's unsuccessful bid for New Haven City Council. She lent him money and encouraged Keith to attend business school. Keith got to where he is based purely on the generosity of other people. This can be a difficult thing for most people because you have to be willing to accept generosity. It doesn't just fall straight into your lap. You have to seek it out. As you grow older, you realize just how important connections are. Maybe you've done your fair share of asking people to help you get a job, and it makes you feel ashamed that you need to ask for it. But in order for you to be successful, you have to be willing to ask. Remember that the rich only get richer because they know the importance of connecting with other people. You have to be willing to ask for help as much as you're willing to give it. As mentioned before, connecting with other people isn't just this cold transaction where you engage with people simply because you can get something from them. Keith looks at connecting as a constant process of giving help and receiving help and receiving help. It's not about just getting ahead, but helping other people get ahead as well. This mindset may sound naive, but the power of connections can change a person's life. Keith enjoys giving career advice to young people. It gives him satisfaction to hear their success stories as their careers progress. Since he's in a position to do so, he offers help to a person in the form of calling up a company for a job or an internship. More often than not, the person rejects Keith's offer because they think they can't ever repay his generosity. But it's not about repaying the person. It's about knowing that there's a mutual need. People who are incredibly wealthy know this dynamic. If you spend time and energy in building and nurturing relationships, both parties will get something out of it, whether it be advice, wisdom, or money. 
the incredibly wealthy build and maintain relationships because they wouldn't have gotten to where they are now if not for the connections they made. For you to be successful, you have to stop keeping score. If you're uncomfortable with receiving help from other people because you feel like you have to return the favor, stop looking at it that way. You can't form connections if you keep thinking like that. Your connections will know each other because of you. And in this way, they'll help out each other. Keith compares this idea to the internet. As people get more access to it, the more valuable it becomes. Because Keith helped a lot of young people succeed in their careers before. He now has a small army behind him that will mentor the people who come to him for help now. Do your homework. Did you ever attend a class totally unprepared? Or did you ever take an exam that you only studied for about an hour? Remember the feeling of unpreparedness you felt in these situations. That's how you feel when you have the opportunity to build relationships, but you end up failing it because you were totally unprepared. When Keith has the opportunity to meet a bunch of people that he wants to make connections with, he always goes out of his way to do some research. You should make a short summary of the people that you're going to meet. What are they like? What are they like? What things do they enjoy doing? What are they proudest of? These are questions that can lead you to knowing the person well. Of course, you should also equip with yourself with the knowledge of what they do for a living. Today, this is fairly easy since everything is online. If the person isn't on Google, the company he works at will surely be there and you'll know what the company does and what its goals are. If you're down on your luck and neither the person nor the company is available online, know more about the industry they're in. Better yet, know more about the type of job the person has. When you take the time to do your research, you won't waste your time asking the wrong questions. The window of opportunity to talk to people is very slim, so you have to make your conversation memorable. Making connections isn't about how many you make, but the quality of each one. You have to nurture your relationships for this is the way to get far in life. That person can't vouch for you in the future if you just see them as someone you can use for your own advantage. When Keith is to attend the Milkins Institute Global Conference, he researches about the people he could meet during this three-day gathering. Keith calculated that he would be in the right position at the right time if he hangs out at the bar since people would get some drinks one way or another. It's painful to strike up a conversation with people you don't know. But if you're set on connecting with people, you have to do away with small talk. Keith makes sure that the conversation he was going to have with these top leaders and CEOs had to be deep and rich. Because important people are used to people chatting them up constantly. You have to talk about things that can make them remember you. If you do this successfully, you'll not only build your relationship with them, they'll be impressed by you as well. This is what Keith did. When he knew that John Peppers would be attending the event, Keith studied him. He knew that John, the former CEO of Procter Gamble, was a fellow graduate of Yale. With this lead, Keith figured that John must know of Robin Winks, a well repted professor at their university. When Keith mentioned this to John, they immediately hit it off. Just by doing his research, Keith had managed to capture the attention of John. They had an insightful conversation that certainly stuck with the former CU. They stayed in touch over the years and John offered Keith wise advice for his company. Warming the cold call. There will be moments in your quest to connect with people that you'll have to cold call them. Cold calling is the stuff of nightmares for a lot of people. In order for you to conquer it, you have to face it head on. Think of it as an opportunity and a challenge. Yes, you'll be rejected many times. But if you believe that you'll never get something out of it, there's a huge chance that it will come true. Calling strangers for a request is a terrifying thing to do. But there are techniques to warm up cold calls. Keith suggested these following strategies. Number one, draft off a reference. The reason why cold calling is torture is because you never really have a solid reason as to why the person should listen to you. 
they can easily put the phone down because they've had cold callers contact them before. For you to warm up the cold call, mention a mutual friend or an institution right off the bat. Keith did this when he helped Jeff Arnold, the founder of WIMD. Get in touch with Sony. Jeff wanted to collaborate with Sony for a product they were trying to launch, but he didn't know how. Keith tried to reach the CEO of Sony at the time, but like many CEOs, he was always busy and impossible to reach. So Keith worked his way up by using his connections. Brand Buzz was a marketing agency who had Sony as one of its top clients. Keith knew John Partilla, the CEO of Brand Buzz. So he talked to John and John connected Keith with Serge, the head of media internet strategies of Sony. Sergey was extremely busy as well, but he listened to Keith because he mentioned John. Serge now listened to Keith because he was credible enough. Soon, Keith got back to Jeff and Webb got the deal. Number two, state your value. Since you only have a short amount of time to convince someone that you're worth hearing out, you have to make it count. State not only what you can do for them, but how you can add to their company's success. Keith knew that Sony was preparing to launch new products, and he knew that they had to make it stand out. He mentioned to Serge that Jeff Arnold's new product would help Sony in this area. Number three, talk a little. Say a lot. Make it quick, convenient, and clear. Make sure to be urgent about the matter, but also add a sense of convenience. Instead of, we should meet soon. Say, are you free this coming Thursday? This is important for the both of us, so I'll make time no matter what. Provide a convincing pitch, but also give the person time to talk. If you take over the spotlight, the person won't be interested in whatever you're saying. Don't talk at someone. Remember that your objective isn't just to get something from them, but to foster a relationship as well. In the case of Keith, he told Serge that they should meet personally to discuss more. During that week, Keith was in Sarge's office talking about the proposition. Number four, offer a compromise. Aim for some options so that whatever compromise is agreed on, you could still walk away with something. Even if Serge turned down Keith's proposition during the warm call, Keith would still ask Serge if they could meet. In this way, Keith could build a connection with Serge, who is a high-ranking employee at Sony. Never eat alone. One of the golden rules when it comes to building relationships is that you should never, ever disappear. Always be active and visible in your web of connections because, again, you're not only creating bridges between you and other people, you're not only creating bridges between you and other people, you're nurturing your relationships with them as well. Many of Keith's connections turned into lifelong friendships in the long run. Someone who knows many important people has nurtured each connection over the years. That someone got to where he is because of persistence and determination. Keith wouldn't get to where he is now if he didn't have a strong work ethic. He also made sure that if there was an opportunity to grow his connections, he would take it. Keith was a busy man and when he had the chance to fly to New York for a business. Related matter, he wanted to see three people. He wanted to meet up with an old client who was the former president of Lego, a friend who was the coup of Broadway video, and another very close friend. But the problem was that Keith's free time was so short that he could only manage to visit just one friend. Keith worked smart in this situation because instead of seeing all three people separately, he invited all of them to dinner. It didn't only give him the opportunity to spend quality time with each of them. Keith also introduced them to each other. Each friend broadened their connections just by showing up for dinner. Keith did this frequently. He would invite a potential employee for a jog, and he'd interview them during that time. Keith would sometimes ask an employee to join him for a ride so that they could discuss about work. The more connections you have, the more opportunities you'll create to build even more connections. Think back to when Keith uses the internet as an analogy for making connections. The more people have access to the internet, the more valuable it becomes. Connections are like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. Conclusion In this book, 
you learned that what will truly make or break you is the people you connect with. The rich keep getting richer because they know that building and nurturing relationships is the key to unlimited opportunities. Connections aren't just the people you run to when you need something from them. You have to gain the trust of the people you connect with so that they can vouch for you and you can vouch for them. Getting connected with people is a two-way relationship. They can help you and you can also help them. Thus, you should stop keeping score when people help you out. Take the time to actually invest in the connections you make because who knows? You'll find a lifelong friend in them too. Never stop being active in your connections because the more connections you have, the more opportunities you'll get in making more. Success is yours if you discipline yourself. Your ambition to succeed is like Japanese carp, a kind of fish. Carps grow according to the size of the pond they are placed in. If you put carps in a big pond, they'll grow to their full potential. If you keep setting big goals and you keep achieving them, you'll eventually be successful in life. Work on having a solid work ethic and never stop connecting with people. People whose names you often hear on the news discipline themselves to get where they are now. With the help of other people, of course, work on being like them.